Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to be doing problems with um, resistors in series and in parallel for this part of the video. A circuit consists of three resistors connected in, a ser in series to a 24 volt, volt battery. The current is 0 0.032 amps. Given that R1 is 250 ohms, let me just label that over here. R1 being 250 ohms, so this is 250 ohms. R2 is 150 ohms, 150 ohms, and now we have to find what R3 is equal to, okay? It says find the value of R3. Okay, so let's, for this, let's just make a little chart. So what we have here is we have 24 volts, and let's say this is the resistance equivalence. So we could call this the R total if we want, and we know that the current is going to be 0 0.032. So since this is just one wire, all of this is one wire, what that means is the current is the same throughout the whole wire. So that's important to know. So that's why I just have an R total here, because the current is going to be the same throughout the whole thing. So if I now do this, the V total is equal to the current total times the resistance total. I have 24 is equal to 0 0.032 and then R. And then I can find that the R total is now equal to 24 divided by 0 0.032. And I get that as 750 ohms. However, that's the total. We want to just find out what R3 is, this one right here. So R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So now we know that um, this is going to be 750, R1 is equal to 250, plus R2, which is 150, and now we can find what R3 is. So if this is 400, R3 is going to equal 350 ohms. Okay. Uh, part B asks, what's the voltage across each resistor? Okay, so this is interesting to know. So now we have to find what the voltage is from here to here from here to here, and from here to here. So I'm going to just call this V1. V1 is going to be equal to the resistance here times the current there. So the current is going to be the same throughout, like we talked about, 0 0.032. And the resistance right there is going to be 250. So let's figure out what that is, 250 times 0 0.032. And we get 8 volts. That's for V1. V2, we're going to call this here V2. And so we know V2 has the same current, which is equal to 0 0.032. And then the, uh, the resistance there is 150. So this is going to be equal to 150 times 0 0.032. And it's going to be 4.8 volts. At this point here, what we should know is everything is going to add up to 24. So if we do 8 uh, plus 4.8, that's going to give us 12.8. So that uh, that means that our answer is for this one is going to be 11.2. However, let's just write it out. I'm going to write it out up here. Uh, yeah, sure. So up there, I'm going to say V3 is equal to the current 0 0.032. And the uh, resistance, 350. And then we get 350 times 0.032, uh, 11.2, like I said. Okay. And like I said, they should all the voltages should add up to whatever the battery is, the total. So that's 24. Okay. Okay. Let's look at this next one. An ammeter is connected in series with three resistors. One, two, three. Uh, reads an electric current of two amps. So this reads a current of two amps. What is the electric current flowing through R3? So we want to know what the current is right here. So you might want to think about this for a little bit. Is it going to be less? Is it going to be one-third amps? Is it going to be two-thirds amps? Is it going to be the same, two amps? Or is it going to be more, three amps? So I feel a lot of times when people look at a question like this, they think that it's going to be less because, oh, if the electrons have to flow through all of these, then that means that this is going to be less. It's going to be less by the time it gets here. However, that's not true. 
since this is all the same wire, the electrons are passing through the same exact uh, resistors and everything like that, there are, the current through the wire is all going to be exactly the same. So in a circuit like this, the current everywhere along this wire is going to be exactly the same. So it's going to be the same as 2 amps right here. Okay. So just letting you guys know that. All right. Uh, resistors in parallel now. So this one's a little bit more difficult. Consider a circuit with three resistors. R1, which is equal to 250. So let me just write that uh, down here. 250. R2, which is equal to 150, and then R3, which is equal to 350. Okay, connected in parallel with the 24 volt battery. Okay, find the total current supplied by the battery. Okay, very good. So we want to find what the total current is. However, before we could do that, we need to find what the resistance total is. So I'm just going to draw this out real quick. We have 24 volts, and then I'm just going to make this the resistance total. And we're going to try to find what that is. And then after we do that, we should be able to find what the current is. Okay, so we should know that the R total, since this is in parallel, is going to be 1 over R total is going to be equal to 1 over R1, which is 250, plus 1 over R2, which is 150, plus 1 over R3, which is 350. So now we're going to find what the inverse of all of that is and figure out what the answer is. So 1 over 250 plus 1 over 150 plus 1 over 350, and then we find the inverse of that and give us 73.94. 73.94 ohms. Okay, so that's what the R total is. Once we figure out what the R total is, now we could do V total is equal to a current total times R total. So V is 24. Current's what we're looking for. Our total is 73.94. Now we can find what the current is. 24 divided by 73.94. And we get 0 0.32. So 0 0.32 amps as our total current. So important to know how that works is there's 0 0.32 amps through this wire. And then it splits. Some of it goes here, some of it goes here, and then others go over here. And then again, there's a 0 0.32 right here. Whoopsies. Okay, so where it splits off, there's going to be less here and less here and less here. Uh, I want you to even think which one's going to have more current, I1, I2, or I3. So this is part B said, what is the current through each resistor? And I want you to think, is, is there going to be more current in I1, I2, or I3? I want you to think about that. But first, we're going to find what I1 is equal to. So what we should know, so this is important for power, uh, parallel circuits. The change in voltage of all three of these are going to be exactly the same. Since the voltage is pushing, these, uh, pushing the current into all of these, it's using the same force to push them. So from here to here, the change in voltage of each of these is going to be 24 volts. Okay? So it's going to be it's going to be pushing them with 24 volts. So for the first one, V1 equals I1 R1. V1 we know is 24. I1 is what we're looking for and R1 is equal to 250. And now we can find that I1 is equal to 4 divided by 250, 0 0.096, 0 0.096 amps, okay, uh, V2 is equal to I2, R2, V2 is 24, I2 we're looking for, R2 is 150, and then we can find that I2 equal to 24 divided by 150 and get 0 0.16 0 0.16 amps okay last one v3 is equal to i3 over r3 this is going to be 24 i3 and then r3 is equal to 350 and we get i3 is equal to 24 divided by 350, 0 0.07, or maybe I should 
go a little bit more. 0 0.069. 0 0.069 amps. Okay? And what you notice is the one that has the most current is the second one, and that's because it has the least amount of resistance. Okay? It wants to go to the path of least resistance, so that's where most of the current will go, the path of least resistance. Also, if you add up these three numbers, they equal the total current as we see right here. Okay? So it equals each other. All right. Now let's look at the next conceptual problem. Parallel resistors have a current running through them. R1 is equal to 50 ohms. R2 is equal to 100 ohms. Which resistor will have more current running through it? Okay, so let's look at that. If this one is 50 and this one here is 100, we should know that there's going to be more current running through this one because it has less resistance. The less resistance, the more current wants to go through. Okay, so it's going to be R1. All right, so let's look at this last one here. So if we're looking at this problem, we want to find a few things. We want to find what the total resistance is, the total current, and the current for each of these. Uh, let's start with finding what the total resistance is. Okay, so we know that, whoopsies, let me erase that real quick. We know that our total is equal to 1 over 17 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 11. That's all of these here. They're all in parallel with each other. Now we have to find the inverse of that. So let's do that. 1 divided by 17 plus 1 divided by 12 plus 1 divided by 11. And the inverse, we get 4.29. So 4.29 ohms. And that's the total. Okay. So that's right here. 4.29. Now that we have the resistance total, it should be easy to find what the current total is going to be. So the V total is equal to the current total times the resistance total. We know the V total is 60. The current total is what we're looking for, and the resistance is 4.29. Now for the current, we get 60 divided by 4.29, and we get 13.99. 13.99. And we could put that there, 13.99. Again, now for the change in voltage is going to be simple for this. So since this is in parallel, this battery is pushing out these electrons. And it's going to be, push, it's going to be pushing all these electrons with the same force into all three of these. Maybe force isn't the right word, but it's going to be pushing it with the same voltage of 60 volts. So this is going to be 60 volts. Since they're all in parallel, it's going to be the same 60 volts. Ooh, no need to put that V there. Uh, it just shows that there's two of them. Okay, But now that we know that, we should be able to find I1, I2, I3. I want you to think about which one, again, is going to have the most amount of current going through it. So let's just look at this. Let's look at R1. So I'm going to do V1 is equal to I1 uh, and R1. So this is going to be 60 is equal to I1, which we're looking for, and R1, which is 17. And then... 60 divided by 17, you get 3.53, 3.53 amps. Oops, I should square all these. All right, 3.53. And then for uh, V2, let's go to I2, R2. V2 is 60. I2 is what we're looking for. R2 is 12. I2, 60 divided by 12, which gives us 5 amps. And then lastly, V3 is equal to current 3, R3. So then we have 60 is equal to I3, which we're looking for. R3, which is 11. Then so we get I3, 60 divided by 11, 5.45, or oh, maybe 5.46 amps, okay? And then we can see again, the one with the least amount of resistance has the most amount of current, okay? 
And if you notice, if you add all of these up, it equals to what this number is right here, the i total. All right? 